If you've been wondering if stress, emotional trauma, inflammation, or adrenal problems like adrenal fatigue can cause histamine intolerance and MCA symptoms to get worse, I want you to stay tuned and watch today's video all the way to the end because I've got some surprising remedies that I want to share with you, but I also want to share with you eight or nine things that cause inflammation, cause adrenal problems, and it's literally these eight or nine things that may be the reason why you're not getting better. Hi there, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I'm the clinic director here at drhagmeyer.com, where we help patients from all over the world find answers and solutions to chronic health problems using functional medicine and personalized nutrition. You've probably noticed that when someone suffers with symptoms of histamine intolerance or MCAS, it's much more complicated than just popping a few antihistamines and following this low histamine diet. There are many things that are filling up the so-called histamine and MCS bucket, and adrenal problems and inflammation might be something that's filling up your bucket. Let's unpack some of these topics, and hopefully through this video and these video series that I've done on histamine intolerance and MCS, there'll be some uh, solutions for you, as well as just really just providing you with some really good information uh, about this particular topic. Now, keep in mind, most allergies, asthma, hives, brain fog, and for the most part, virtually all the other symptoms that are associated with histamine intolerance and MCS, these are driven by various pro-inflammatory substances. These are things that you may have heard of. These are things that I've talked about in past videos, like leukotrienes and prostaglands and tryptases uh, and interleukins and various other kinds of immune chemical messengers. But essentially, what's happening here is, is they are driving a very, very powerful inflammatory response throughout your entire body. Now, the key here is that cortisol is one of the primary hormones that's produced by the adrenal glands, and it has a very, very strong anti-inflammatory effect, meaning that it reduces inflammation. This is really why doctors shoot people's ankles and knees and shoulders uh, and spine with cortisol, right? And think about it like this. When you have too much inflammation, you have too much histamine that's being released in response to allergies, right? All of these things that, uh, that I've talked about in past videos cause the mast cells to degranulate, like you see in this video here. And this is a good thing, but when this happens and your body can't shut this histamine off, when your body can't degrade this histamine, what happens is you get overly inflamed. Too much inflammation, of course, is not a good thing, but the great news is that a healthy body has the ability, it has the tools to lower this inflammation and it has the tools to do this naturally. One of the main glands that's really responsible for this is your adrenal glands. Adrenal glands regulate inflammation by releasing cortisol. Now, if cortisol and other uh, anti-inflammatory chemicals can bring down inflammation, then you're in good shape. But depending on who wins this tug of war between cortisol and histamine determines whether or not your symptoms improve or whether or not your symptoms get much worse. Now, if you want to get your histamine and MCS symptoms under control and you want to have more good days than bad days, guess what you most likely need to address? All right? Now, if you're thinking, or you, perhaps you even said in the back of your head, I better start addressing my adrenal glands and inflammation. Now, that's important to understand. Too many patients, right? Uh, too many patients to, to even begin to count worked with various functional medicine practitioners for histamine intolerance and MCS that didn't get better. And some of the doctors worked on things like genetic aspects. Some worked on aspects related to nutritional deficiencies. Some worked on gut issues, uh, SIBO, leaky gut. Some worked on mold and mold allergies. But for one reason or another, these practitioners missed out on one of the overriding pieces of this big picture. They missed the adrenal, cortisol, stress, and inflammation component. And this component is very, very important to histamine and many of the things that we've uh, talked about in past videos. The other thing is they never retested. So those problems that those patients perhaps thought they addressed, perhaps maybe because symptoms improved, right? Um, because those symptoms, because those, those tests were never retested, you never really know if those problems were corrected, right? They gave a patient, for example, uh, a protocol for mold, or they gave a patient a protocol to heal the gut, or uh, a person started a protocol for hormones. But yet, those symptoms may improve, but the hormone problem, the mold problem, uh, the gut problem 
because we're never retested, still exist, right? So that's actually something that's very, very important that I want you to know. Two important takeaways here is that just because you start a protocol or you started taking supplements and you felt better, this doesn't necessarily mean that your problem is gone or it's been fixed. Only that retesting will tell you if your problem is fixed. So that's number one, get retested uh, if a problem was identified. And number two is don't overlook the adrenal inflammation piece. So while I don't know if these are applicable to you, they're, these are very common problems that we see in patients all the time. Every single day we see these with our patients. If you've been under stress, physical stress, emotional stress, and you suspect that stress is a component to your histamine and MCAS symptoms, I want you to visit my website, drhagmar.com, and under quizzes, you can assess your risk and potential severity for adrenal problems, as well as get some initial recommendations on where to start. If after taking that quiz, you fall into a high risk category of adrenal fatigue or adrenal problems, it's probably a good idea to get tested. If you're someone who perhaps um, has already been tested uh, and you know you have adrenal fatigue and you've seen that your cortisol levels are too low or they're too high, you and your doctor now need to further investigate the causes of these poor adrenals, the causes of why these adrenal glands are high or why these adrenal glands are low. Now, take a look at all the symptoms that I've got listed here that are associated with low cortisol and chronic inflammation. And if this is happening to you, you and your functional medicine practitioner really need to dig into what are the potential causes about this. You guys need to have a, a serious talk and a, and a serious sit down about, about what are some of the potential causes, right? So you need to do a few things. Number one, your doctor uh, really needs to find out what else is driving inflammation and really depleting these cortisol levels. And number two, what's driving these adrenal glands into the ground, right? And this, of course, could be many, many different things that I'm going to be reviewing with you in just a second. The third thing here is, is while you're trying to find out the cause of these weak adrenals, you need to start out supporting these adrenal glands, right? Um, you need to uh, perhaps support them with specific vitamins. You need to address some of these aspects that are driving inflammation. And this might be something like adrenal glandulars. It might be something like certain herbal treatments. Those things, again, you should discuss with your functional medicine practitioner. If you don't have a functional medicine practitioner, however, and you're, you're struggling with these symptoms, then what I recommend that you do is you start out with my adrenal support pack. This phase one support pack really addresses many of the things that I've seen over the years, and they can be very, very helpful in revitalizing these adrenal glands. Doing this alone, can often give you some significant relief and give you just kind of a jump start into uh, addressing some of these problems related to the adrenal glands. And of course, um, you know, do this as you're finding and as you're working with a functional medicine practitioner. One of the big things is that whoever you work with, that this functional medicine practitioner usually um, should have uh, done a very thorough case review with you. And based on that case review, they should be able to identify what your triggers are. And then from there, determine what's going to be the best kinds of testing. So with that being said, let's get into some of the things that could be driving inflammation, depleting your cortisol levels, making histamine intolerance and MCI symptoms sometimes unbearable, right? So one of the things that I think about when I think about uh, driving factors behind inflammation, some things that come to mind are going to be number one is going to be like things like glutathione levels and oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is really the imbalance between the amount of free radicals in your body and the antioxidant levels that are available to the cells. Ultimately, if you have too many free radicals and you have too many of these uh, reactive oxygen species, this is going to lead to cell tissue damage and of course, inflammation. I also think about things like mold allergies and mold biotoxins and mycotoxins, right? You can check out the video that I did on, on this. Um, next thing I think about are fluctuations in blood sugar. These are gonna be things like hypoglycemia or insulin resistance. So in other words, if you know that you have blood sugar problems, maybe you're pre-diabetic, maybe you have high levels of insulin. Again, these are things that can drive chronic pain. These are things that can drive chronic inflammation. These are things that can drive weight gain. And of course, they can drive more and more and more histamine intolerance. The next thing I like to consider is uh, something that relates to inflammation again, and these uh, may be applicable to you, some won't be. Uh, I don't know what your individual triggers are. I just want to give you some uh, some ideas, some basically a quick summary of the things that I've seen in patients. Right. So the next thing that I think about is gut inflammation. Right. These may be things like gut dysbiosis. Uh, this is damage perhaps to the gut lining. Maybe this is a leaky gut. 
This might be, uh, perhaps you're watching this video and you have Crohn's disease or you have celiac disease or you have ulcerative colitis. Maybe you have H. pylori, maybe you have SIBO. Again, remember, all of these diseases, they damage the gut lining. And when you damage the gut lining, you damage the cells that make DAO. And these are the enzymes that help you degrade histamine. Again, the next thing I think about are high histamine foods, right? Um, high histamine foods, which I've talked about in past videos. I, I have a, a free guide that I put together that kind of goes through uh, these foods that are high in histamine. Of course, these are one of the things that could be filling up your bucket. And for that reason, I recommend that you start eliminating these high histamine foods. Don't do it for too long because, of course, this can lead to nutritional deficiencies. But nevertheless, start eliminating these high histamine foods. Right? The next thing I think about are uh, disrupted sleep cycle. Right, Anytime you disrupt the circadian cycle or the, the rhythm of the sleep cycle, um, this can throw off your mast cells in terms of the production of mast cells and also the degranulation of mast cells. Again, the breakdown of those. The next thing I think about as it relates to, again, uh, uh, this histamine and MCS bucket is I think about food allergies, which drive an IgE immune system reaction. I think it's very important to test for those. And then there are also things that cause more of a delayed reaction. And these are the IgA and IgG food sensitivity tests. Okay, These uh, could be potentially problems. And one of the things that I see often with patients is food intolerances or food allergies to things like dairy intolerances to gluten, things like soy, corn, shrimp. So even though these foods, some of these foods are just by their very nature are high histamine foods, some of these foods that you might be eating may be acceptable foods on the histamine list, uh, meaning foods that you can eat. But nevertheless, if you're having a reaction to these foods, you can still have a problem with them. So for that reason alone, I very often will run food sensitivity testing and food allergy testing on my patients. Uh, but the next thing I think about that can affect um, histamine intolerance and MCAS and inflammation and adrenal glands and inflammation are medications, right? We know that various medications can influence and affect DAO enzyme activity. Again, here is where I think about many of your antihistamines. I think about your antidepressants. I think about some of the medications that patients are put on for um, uh, problems with their heart, antiarrhythmic drugs, medications. So again, there's a whole list of, of things on my website about the different medications that can drive more inflammation, drive more histamine in your body. The next one, of course, is nutritional deficiencies. Right? In one of my videos, I've talked about gut health and histamine intolerance. I also talked about many of the vitamins and minerals that when people are deficient, um, those deficiencies in vitamins and minerals, those can impair DAO enzyme activity and also how the gut heals. Right? And that becomes very... Uh, important to think about as well when you start addressing some of these root causes of histamine and MCS intolerance. The next thing I think about uh, that can drive inflammation, filling up that histamine bucket are infections, right? These are things like Epstein-Barr virus. Um, I had a patient just a couple of weeks ago, uh, hepatitis, right? Chronic hepatitis. Um, Epstein-Barr virus, again, responsible for chronic fatigue. Those are things that are all, again, worth considering. Another thing that I think about, again, just on this summary, this quick list of potential problems driving inflammation in your body is certain environmental and uh, environmental chemicals, right? This could be things like cigarette smoke or other work-related chemicals. Could be stress or trauma, right? Again, so again, I'm just trying to um, give you a few uh, ideas about some of these things that might be potentially filling up this histamine bucket. I'm sure I missed a few. I'm sure we could add to this list. But again, those are just some things off the top of my head that I think uh, become potential problems for those individuals that are out there suffering with histamine and MCS intolerance. Um, the other thing I think is important is that, again, so important, is that rather than trying to put this together by yourself, one blog at a time, one video at a time, one podcast at a time, is work with a functional medicine doctor, right? A functional medicine doctor is going to be able to help you understand all these connections and how this all fits together, right? There now, there's a few other things that I think that I want you to be aware of when it comes to stress and its connection to histamine and MCS. Number one is emotional stress or emotional trauma, right? This can take on many, many different forms, right? This can be just as devastating to the person with histamine and MCIS as the physical and the chemical stressors that I just mentioned. So emotional stress is one of those big things that needs to be addressed as well. 
Studies have shown how trauma, uh, especially traumatic experiences, emotional abuse, divorce, uh, the death of a loved one, uh, puts the body in a fight or flight reaction. And the fight or flight reaction really triggers not only the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands, but that emotional stress response also triggers those mast cells to degranulate. And as I've already mentioned, when mast cells begin to degranulate, they release histamine and a variety of other different kinds of neuroinflammatory chemicals. And it's these neuroinflammatory chemicals that now can go on to damage the brain. In the studies like you see here uh, that I'll post, Frontiers in Neuroscience uh, in 2017, we see that stress and trauma also affect a leaky brain, right? So in other words, stress and trauma can induce changes to the blood brain barrier. So not only does stress cause this leaky gut, but stress and that fight or flight response causes a leaky brain. Now this might be important for those of you that are out there who suffer with anxiety or you suffer with post-traumatic stress disorder, or you have symptoms like agitation and irritability and hostility. Maybe you have self-destructive thoughts and changes in your behavior, maybe social isolation, um, severe anxiety, a loss of interest in life. Again, overwhelming feelings of guilt and loneliness and insomnia. All of these things are some of the most underappreciated symptoms that many people with histamine intolerance and MCS often suffer with. All right, so what happens if this goes on long enough and you don't get the professional help that you need, not only does that adrenal fatigue or the HPA axis dysregulation, which I've talked about, now affect the brain, the brain becomes the target, right? So, you know, what starts out just being a problem with the adrenals now begins to affect the brain. And with adrenal fatigue, we see this um, very often with people, again, with emotional trauma. It becomes more and more and more difficult to produce the additional amounts of cortisol that you need to counteract the inflammation and the inflammatory response that's going on in your body caused by excess histamine. If you've ever wondered why some people who experience stress, it seems that they just almost shut down, uh, almost like a like a, a flitch, uh, like a switch was was flipped. They experience more brain fog, they experience more cognitive decline, they, they experience more depression and more irritability. These individuals may be suffering with a leaky brain. So let's jump into the last topic for today's video, which is some of the lifestyle tips that you can start implementing to help heal your adrenals, right? So here are a few tips that you wanna start implementing today. If you suspect adrenal stress and adrenal fatigue, playing a role in the triggering of histamine and MCS symptoms. Number one, as soon as you wake up in the morning, drink a half a glass of water along with a quarter teaspoon of Celtic or Himalayan sea salt. Usually four to six ounces is sufficient. So I guess that's about a cup. Um, sea salt is so important because it has over 80 plus minerals that help nourish the adrenal glands. They help nourish the endocrine gland. So that's tip number one. The next thing that I think about uh, when it comes to supporting the adrenal glands is making sure that you are eating breakfast within an hour of waking up, all right? So that's very important. That's something that I've talked about in past videos. Another thing you wanna make sure that you don't do is that you're skipping meals, right? If you wait any longer than this, this can cause your blood sugar levels to drop. This in turn can cause your adrenal glands to release cortisol. And the next thing you know, you've got mast cells that are beginning to break apart and degranulate. Um, the next thing I think that becomes very important to think about is when it comes to eating, make sure that when you're sitting down for each meal, that you're eating slowly, that you're chewing your food, and that you're thoroughly relaxed, you know, that you're not under stress at the time that you're eating. The next thing I want to stress is the importance of being outdoors, right? Being out in the fresh air, grounding yourself, getting in tune with nature, going for walks. These are all things that have been shown over and over and over again to reduce the stress response in the body. Think about it, right? What does your soul crave? Everybody's soul craves something different. Some people it's the mountains, some people it's the ocean, some people it's the woods, whatever that might be. Try to find that, that inner peace, that place where you find comfort, that place that feeds and, and nourishes your soul. The other thing that I think is so important here is um, don't intermittent fast, right? This is a, a big problem. This is something that I see a lot of people do. Um, they intermittent fast, they go on low carb diets. And again, this can put an enormous amount of stress on your thyroid gland. This can put an enormous stress on your adrenal glands. And again, here's the thing, while low carbohydrate diets 
for some people can be very, very helpful for many health issues. I don't recommend it in those people that have adrenal problems or thyroid problems that's connected to histamine and MCS. All it does is create this an additional stress response in the body, causes more cortisol, and the next thing uh, you know is, is that you're getting you know, a breakout in hives because of this poor adaption to that stress response. The next thing I would focus in on is trying to get to bed by 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. every single night. Your adrenal glands need rest, they, and the majority of the healing in our bodies, they take place at night. And so again, when you're sleeping, if you're having trouble sleeping, um, I think it's important to implement some of the things that I've talked about in a video that I've done where I talk about some of the overlooked areas of insomnia. I think the name of the video is seven overlooked areas uh, or, or seven reasons why you're having trouble sleeping at night or seven overlooked areas of, of insomnia. All right. So you can just Google that, find that uh, on my YouTube channel. But that video goes through a lot of different things that talk about how to reset uh, the sleeping pathways as well as some of the things that cause insomnia and trouble sleeping, all right? The next thing I want to talk about is the importance of B vitamins, right? Now, if you need B vitamins, let's say you've had testing that comes back and your B vitamins are low, make sure you're taking a good B complex. B vitamins are, are some of the most important vitamins needed by your body. Stay hydrated. Avoid caffeine. That's another important thing that I can't stress enough. Uh, sounds easy to do. Uh, drink more water, but the fact of the matter is, is most people are not doing this. So again, I recommend that you try to drink half your body weight in ounces per day. Again, if you're 140 pounds, try to get 70 ounces of water per day or more. All right. So there you go. We've had on a lot of different things today. Hope you find this video series helpful. Um, if you're trying to figure out really this, this uh, puzzle and, and really some of the different pieces of the histamine MCS puzzle, uh, and in your particular case, what those might be, you want my perspective, you can always visit my website. Uh, we can schedule a, a brief 15 minute phone consult. If you feel you need help implementing a low histamine diet, I have several nutritionists that can help guide you through this and support you through, through uh, that process uh, with that histamine elimination diet, as well as help you with recipes and things like that. Also, there's a, uh, a starter guide that I have available on my website. You can download that starter guide to low histamine eating. Lots of great tips in there. And so again, we can help you as much or as little as you want. We can go as, as slow or, or we can really hit the ground running. All right, so that's gonna wrap up today's video with the connection between stress and trauma, cortisol, inflammation, its connection to histamine and MCAS. If you like today's video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, uh, make sure you hit that notification button. Again, uh, this way when we upload new videos, you'll be notified when those videos are uploaded. So there you go. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, wish you the best. Talk to you soon. Take care.